Rights was established as an anti-slavery militia with its goal of self-defense against slave catchers. In the eyes of the federal government and federal law as constituted with the enactment of the Fugitive Slave Act, this organization clearly promoted illegal civil, and most remarkably, armed resistance. The hip hop writer is a creator, <laughs> composing understanding words of culture, brilliance, powering a rebalance of the elements equally. Pages of rejuvenated reaffirmation, simply the almighty leadership of insightful craft work that stands to build through any confrontation born to be. Yet his daily duty is as a journalist that questions properly and uses his ears to filter the real. And as the art decays by dilution, he concentrates the best again and again, exposing it in the print. Today's journalist and tomorrow's historian, he listens to share. Here is that necessary attempt executed again and again and again. This is the Power Right Show on S Street Media. This is your brother, the lone low life with the home sewn garment, the boricua with the build, the true and living God stepping in score. Sunya is Allah, a.k.a. Skiller Straight Low, and we're on S Street Media, the evolution of media, where every entry will have its own show, every incredible thought will have its own episode, and every timeless insight will be archived. And as I said, this show is about my element of hip-hop, what I call the writer of art on art and science on music. The only show in history on the hip-hop writer element that I, a veteran of over 25 years, help pioneer and um, that pioneering has been concentrated and funneled 
and filtered into a glorious book. The Filtered Reel Essays from the Invisible Renaissance is my beginning attempt to, in an art, an art fashion, using all of this art from the 2010s to really capture, capsulate and capture the music of the 2010s, which I call the Invisible Renaissance, that era I call the Invisible Renaissance. And I mainly used records and, and highlighted records from 2018 to go backwards and cover the entire decade. So um, the book is really a collection that includes uh, essays I've published earlier years. It includes new essays never, never read before, never published before. And it's got some updates to a, some older essays too and some new ones that um, I never really, you know, I wrote right at the time that I, that I did the book. So it's out there, it's on Amazon as a paperback, as an ebook. Um, you, should all, you can also get at me at Sunez, S-U-N-E-Z on Instagram. And you can pay me whatever you want above $19. <laughs> That's a good day. Eh? <laughs> you can pay anything as long as a lot. But, um, and I'll send you the book out though. But um, this is the book, The Filtered Reel, cover done by my brother Paragon, who also does and designs a website, premierhiphop.com, where I wrote, have been writing, and there are plenty of pieces there. Um, probably over 200 pieces that I've written out there that really expound on what I'm talking about, this art and art thing. You know, before I continue, I gotta give a shout out to Supreme Sniper, my son's a park brother, my Boricua brother. Um, he sent me some beautiful artwork. I have, uh, you know, it's in our S Street Media Studios. Um, it's beautiful, it's really ill as hell. And for those watching, look at this. Who is that guy right there in the B-boy stance? That's dope right there, you know what I mean? So anytime that I wanna have a moment where I wanna ogle and, and flaunt over myself, <laughs> God really, you know what I mean, Supreme Sniper, I appreciate you so much, you know what I mean? Um, you know, go look for Supreme Sniper artwork uh, on Instagram. I know they got some underscores in there. I forget how, but um, look up Supreme Sniper on Instagram. Um, his artwork extends to all things that you can wear: hats, t-shirts. Uh, he's got a dope um, sticker collection. You know what I mean? And um, really nice stuff, man. And um, my most famous piece that he has ever done, you know, the whole Abizu Campos collection, the Pedro Abizu Campos collection of our uh, legendary uh, freedom fighter and revolutionary uh, in Puerto Rican history. But um, also a shout out to my low life brother, the God La Kimala, AKA Scrap Low. Um, oh, you know, the brother always uh, supporting me, coming to my defense though, when, uh, you know, I, I open up my classroom to streamers and stuff, and then I've opened it up to trolls of all kinds, though. You know what's funny is that you might know some of these trolls. You know, like, you know what's funny when somebody's trolling you, and then they go, hey, it's me, and I'm like, nigga, <laughs> what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, people that you know in real life, though, and they're showing their colors, though, trolling, you know? So, um, you know, think twice, though, before you look like that, you know what I mean? It's pathetic, you know what I mean? Get your, get your uh, game up, you know? They mad because I'm wearing polo, you know what I'm saying? What do you care about what I'm wearing, though? You know what I'm saying? Well, you know. It's up in my pockets and stuff. You know what I mean? You're not feminine enough to be up in the pockets. And uh, the big, biggest shout out, you know, of enjoyment was uh, our Poetry and Piff. Is that the, uh, that's the second show? The second Poetry and Piff? The third Poetry and Piff show. Um, and it was a great showcase of artists, you know, musical artists and, and and poets, us reading stuff, you know, and performing stuff. And, uh, and then in between that, though, some guy named Stuck B just kept telling everybody, get the fuck out of here. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that's about, though. He's really, you know, it's really bothersome, but everybody seemed to like it, though. But uh, yeah, but uh, shout out to Stuck B and Dunny Brown because um, they, uh, they capped the whole night with a nice performance and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, What's really dope about watching artists grow is that, you know, you could see Stuck B getting better and better at everything that he's doing, you know what I mean? Right. And um, he's, you know, he's really charismatic naturally, you know what I mean? And it, it really showed. The other thing was, uh, see my brother Day's son, I haven't seen him perform out there in a while, you know what I mean? I always see him perform to me, you know, like that's different, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yo, I got something for you. And he just does it though. And if you know Day's son though, 
the way he performs to you by yourself is exactly the same intensity. <laughs> that he, would do. he doesn't just do a dry run like I'm just reading from the paper here. Everything has to be like intense though and he has to blow your head away and, and, and everything like that. You know, nothing's done halfway. But uh, it was great to see him on stage and do some, some poetry because he did some stuff that I didn't hear either. You know, so that was really dope. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? And um, also, too, what I love going to a hip hop show, when you see a, uh, an artist, you know, Polarity had great music. DJ Polarity, shout out to DJ Polarity. And then when Hali Ali came, you know, he kind of exhibited his new beat making prowess, you know? Hmm. And that really impressed me because it's got like, uh, I hate doing this though. But it's got like, um, it's almost got like a grimy 70s um, soul funk style, but it has Mad Lib, Mad Lib wildness to it where it's, it's, it'll, it'll drop off structure, which is really not Mad Lib Ooh, stuff. Holly Holly? Yeah. Got so it's, beats now? Yeah, he got beats now. And <laughs> I was thinking it was, it was hitting me like Mad Lib style, but it wasn't Mad Lib style. It was... He was doing it like a, you know, he was, it was, he's producing like an old reggae producer, you know, like mm. the way they drop out stuff, put right. it back in, drop out. And it's not always in sequence, which makes it exciting. But yo, I'm, I'm going to check him out. Yeah. You're going to have to do the knowledge because it's, it's really dope. You know what I mean? He, he gave us th about three beats and he rhymed and stuff. You know, the way he rhymes and he sways and right. stuff. And he goes, ah, good ride. I love imitating the shit that he does. Huh? <laughs> I, I do, you know? I also do my guest today. I do imitations of him too. But that's, yeah, yeah. Those, are, those are more, I have to be more that's eccentric funny. with those. So I'm going to have to charge for those imitations. I have to charge for these imitations. I can't just be doing them in the street though. But I, you might catch me on the L train tonight going, you know, doing my greasy and my Holly Alicia imitations. That's but he let funny. that, he let those beats play out though. And it was really like a highlight, one of the highlights mm. of the night though. You know what I mean? So uh, kudos to, to Math for putting the, together such a great um, poetry. Because usually there's always like a poet that I'm like, yeah, because I'm a hater, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, I'm like, you yeah, only fuck with my man, you know? And I was like, nah, this is all dope. This is all dope. But uh, I always like to addendum the last episode. The last episode we did was Eddie Kane. Um, my guy. Yeah, Shout and that's just, Kane. for everybody, that's just the beginning of Cat. When I, when I interview somebody and I interview brothers, as you'll see in today, to, in tonight's episode, um, and as you see with people that I do for the first time, this is the beginning of me cataloging their career. You know what I mean? So they're, yeah. once I interview them once, they're open guests, though. Unless they make wax stuff. But, <laughs> right? Let's, all of a sudden, overnight, though, it just becomes trash. You know what I mean? But uh, that, that's not going to happen, you know? And uh, future episodes, I am going to do the all-decade build from 2010 all the way to 2008. 18, and then 2019, I'm going to do the reel of 2019 as a separate episode hmm. and just talk about 2019 because these years have so many records that even I miss records that I loved and I just forgot to talk about them. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like I, I'll literally be forgetting an episode, um, <clears throat> forgetting an artist and I'm going home listening to them and I'm like, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? It didn't coincide okay, with what so. I was doing. Hmm. But um, one last thing before we really officially get into my guest I can't let it go. I want to give a little story. I'm writing a piece, but I, I decided it's really long, so I'm going to put it in one of the books that I'm working on. So I wanted to like just share this out there. And I wanted to say, remember the imperfection to Kobe Bryant. You know, we, we said something at the show, uh, 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 my producer, um, at the show that was very relevant. But I had some stuff to say, but I didn't want to say it because then I would just, you know, go long-winded. Hmm. And I was like, you know, I got a show. I could go long-winded on the show. But um, in the hashtags, in the story I shared on my Instagram post, I'm going to extend that. But I was already old enough where I wasn't really watching much basketball. And I really only cared to watch Allen Iverson in the 2000s, like hmm. most of the 2000s. Because, uh, well, it's Allen Iverson. And I, was, I hated a lot on number eight Kobe Bryant because I was like, nah, Jordan's number one. You know, I was always right, like that. Right, Jordan's right. the GOAT. But, um, but I loved... I started to really love Kobe Bryant when he became 24, you know what I'm saying? And it was because of the acumen that you could say. I love when the legends get older and then they just have these skill sets that you see. And hmm. when, you know, when I saw that documentary with Spike Lee, um, and I'm forgetting the name, somebody told it to me and I already forgot already, so here we go, right? <laughs> Gonna remember this, this on, the, on the A train. This is for the A train when I get back. And... Um, 
But, you know, oh, doing work, something like that. Kobe doing work, something like that. I'm saying the wrong name, so that'll right, help right. people search better. Right, right. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, it was the wackest documentary as far as excitement. I was like, yo, there's no clips here. He's just talking. And it was, it was Spike Lee following Kobe Bryant at one of his whole games and having commentary of Kobe Bryant, everything. Like Kobe hmm. Bryant standing there in between, and he's like, Right there, I was thinking about what I was going to do. It was like boring as hell. It was like a golf thing. It's probably why you don't and remember the title. It was, yeah, and it was, <laughs> it was whack like, when it comes to that because I think a couple of days before, he scored like 50 at the Garden, mm. and that wasn't the one that Spike Lee chose. Right. Right? Nick, <laughs> Knicks fan. That's Knicks fan shit. You know what I mean? Like, you chose the wrong one all the time. I know I'm a Knicks fan. You choose the wrong one all the time. And uh, so... I was like, yo, but the genius that he had about the game, I was like, yo, got to respect this. Like, he's not just a biter. He's a real thinker, philosopher. And over the years, I started to really respect him. But I really started to love Kobe because one of my, a brother I met from Marcy Projects, my brother Terrence, we worked together at, at an office building, and he loved Kobe Bryant. He loves Kobe Bryant. That's not loved. It's loves Kobe Bryant. He's heartbroken, as he should be. And we would talk about Kobe all the time. Right. You know what I mean? And how Kobe inspired this brother to just do all these things that have nothing to do with basketball. You know, he would play basketball, but he did everything with Mamba mentality. He'd do something at work good. And he's like, see, that's the Mamba mentality. And like, he was actually achieving things in a racist environment off the Mamba mentality. You know what I'm saying? Wow. He gave no excuses to the racist thing, whereas I was working more like a Tupac. And I was, <laughs> you know, like I was more of a Tupac at work, you know? And I was like, he was holding back me pissed, you know, spitting at the, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? So, and he, you know, he helped me keep my job for a long time because mm -hmm. of that, you know? And um, when I would joke with him, I would always joke with him, man, you stop with the Kobe stuff. I would, I would hashtag him and I would go, keep on being everything, like, because he, he's always loving Kobe. So I was like, keep on being everything, Kobe, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> Kobe's all of his whole world. Right. And the, the things I saw Kobe, I was also studying Kobe as an educator. Because how many people are great at what they do and able to teach it to others? Hmm. How many people are great at what they do and able to teach the stratagems of how they succeeded to people in totally different fields, like myself and like my brother Terrence? So those things I respect a lot as a teacher, as an educator, and just someone that's being inspired. So, And of course, his game is lovely. It's pretty as hell. It's dope. I mean, you know, he's a clutch. He's a gamer. And um, all those things, I love Kobe Bryant, and it just was a heartbreaking, a heartbreaking tragedy. And um, if you don't shed tears with that, like you, you're a deadbeat, you know what I'm saying? Right. And um, I changed that hashtag. That's why I changed that hashtag. And I was thinking about it. We got, I was telling my brother, we got to keep that mentality all the time. And I started the hashtag, keep on building everywhere. Because we build everywhere. And if that Mamba mentality is one of that ruthless competitiveness to be who we are, then you got to keep on building everywhere, at every cipher that you're in. So like when I think about it, I go in my head, I go, Kobe, keep on building everywhere. You know what I mean? Mm. Don't stop. You know what I mean? And that's, that Mamba mentality is certainly with the brothers I work for, work with here, the artists that I'm about to build with. Like they put everything they have in what they're doing. So uh, I, had to, I had to just say that, you know what I mean? And again, remember the imperfection to all the victims of that tragedy, everybody affected by it. And... Um, definitely remembered imperfection to Kobe Bryant and his daughter, you know, Gigi, you know, uh, Gianna Bryant, you know. And um, with that said, let's shift gears 100% um, to my guest. I think the only way that I want to introduce my guest is by, you know, reciting a piece that I wrote for him, some art on art oh, shit. that I had written for him for his album, Soylent Green, you know what I mean? Because everything is made out of Soylent Green, you know what I mean? Nice. And uh, I called this piece the greasiest, because, you know, that's what it is. It's the greasiest, uh, you know? And uh, it goes like this. Senses to sense, the rebellion of the sensing with searing senselessness. By the sights of poured Hennessy I'd never consume. Bajichu be my tonic. Keep my, words with, keep my fingers with words. Let my hands crunch together the fight hate. See, I do the knowledge, a beige brown number four, the lizard. Eyes blink slow to espy all the small glasses that clang in celebration of a few more breaths and another moment with senses. So I see, so sensibly, sensimia seedlings sand, sanding the floors that meet the soles 
A soul so greasy it glides through the terrors of the times. A joy to tough people in times that turn them so. Hmm. The greasiest. And that, I was describing that because I, I appreciate that. Was that was hard, son. Thank you. I wrote that. I don't know. Grease, you know, my guest is greasy, I mean. And I wrote that piece, Greasy, sitting right there in the studio when you was um, playing Soil and Green for us all. Get out you know what of I mean? here. And I just wrote that that's there. That's awesome. And I was like, that's why I said the glasses clank because right. you were giving the shot glasses right. in celebration because I was That's like, yo, deep. and I was like, yo, Greasy is so fucking hip hop. Like he's so <laughs> hip hop. You know what I mean? Like he was, he was, he was Thank acting the skits on the, on the album. And I was like, yo, it's so dope. Like I would watch a video of you acting out different skits. You know what I mean? I was like, yo, it was, it was, it was peaking at this time. You know what I mean? And, um, <laughs> I consider Greasy the penultimate stylist with an ever-flowing, overlapping array of inflections, stuttered deliveries, idiosyncratic pausing for all necessary effect. The effects of wit, bravado, and black man reality in all its splendor. Now, Greasy is fine, you know, and now we get to see it all because with Greasy finally releasing his album, Soiling Green, in 2018, and then releasing the last of the, uh, the, last of the Gileadites. The League last, of Gileadites. And it's... Uh, the League of Gileadites, yes. And um, a dope, dope, dope album. And uh, that's why he's Thank here, you. though, because, you know, I interviewed you before for Soil and Green, and, you know, so much has happened and stuff like that. But I want to go back and give me, you know, for the people that are just, you know, they're tuning into my show and they never heard a history of Greasy, right. you know what I mean, Send them while, you know, and, and what they've been missing out on and what they can catch on to now. Tell me about the origins of the superhero Greasy, I mean. The origins, born and raised in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. The WB. I mean, my my hip hop career, rhyming. I my brother rhymed. My older brother rhymed. My older sister rhymed. My older brother rhymed when the freaks came out at night. My older sister rhymed when Finesse and Sinquist was soul sistering it up. Mm. So it was just ordained. It was preordained for me to. This literally was just part of the lifestyle. Do this. Like in my the moms home. did poetry. My pops. Mm wrote a couple songs for Eddie Jefferson, Miles Davis, like wow. He was one of the founders of A Jazz Uptown. Mm. Preordained to be here, bro. Yeah, that's so dope. You know what I mean? Because um it it's interesting. I always think about that because a lot of the artists, when they grow up with that music, it becomes easier for them to capture their own, you know, music mm. and performance. It becomes easier for them to capture their way. You know what right. I mean? Well I was I I suppose. I don't know. I'm still I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still figuring out my artistry now. And that's you know, I'm glad that you said that because I see it too, you know what I mean? Like I see one thing about I was saying this off air that it's so exciting to open the package and see what you're gonna get. Cause you're not gonna say, Yeah, he's from Brooklyn, you're just gonna get bars and <laughs> battle bars and you know, dum, num, num, num. you know, we right. get it in and you know and, and while I tracks you know typical brooklyn stuff you know which is you know which is dope the beast bars and all that is dope but um i'm not so typical when brooklyn i yeah person. when i open <laughs> when i open your albums and i and i first of all i get them i put them in my google play and then i i gotta be at a place though to listen to it <laughs> like if i'm outside or something like that right. and everything like that and um, it's always something fresh. There's always something exciting. And I always love, you're one of the few MCs that I want to see how you're going to say certain stuff <laughs> and then what you're going to say. You know, and we're going to go through it because some of this stuff, though, I was giggling like a, like a little kid on the train. Oh, that's what's it, up. Though, you know that's what I mean? That's what's up. It, it was just crazy. Hard, you're a hard person to me. <laughs> you're a very hard person to me. I mean, we, we, you know, we converse and we crack jokes and I see you laugh, but not really. So for you to say that, that's awesome. Yeah, you know, like, it's a that's short awesome. list of albums and, and, and shorter list of MCs that really make me actually, like, happy. You know what I'm saying? It sounds corny. But just happy, like I, I love hip hop, like like you know, who's playing De La Soul. De La Soul is one of them. Right. Like the De La Soul is dead. Nah, always definitely. makes me, you know, what I mean, happy. Bismarcky's going off. Old Dirty Bastards, you know, right. Return of Thirty Six Chambers. Like these are special albums, like that. They had that charisma. They had that enjoyment. You know what I mean? And um, so. they just give you that joy. You know what I'm saying? But um, I always, I, and I'm doing this on purpose. But 
what is when you know because you always has Texas what is greaseball activities what is under the ethos of greaseball activities greaseball activities is everything that's the that's the main company that's the motherboard that's mm. the headquarters that's what runs and right because runs for those that don't know you're making all the music all the rhymes these are all like all made by you you know what i'm saying it's your complete productions complete everything's work. made by me yes you know? and house of fire and yc me and house of fire house of fire masters mixes recorded records all my shit he shoots all the videos edits mm. i mean i shoot some of them y'all seen some of the sh well people can see some of the videos i've shot and edited but um yeah these both activities is the company mm. Let me ask you about something else, though, that uh, before we get into the albums and stuff like that. But I saw you like you was in one of the Instagram posts. You was uh, talking about dipping into stand up comedy and that oh. that joke that you had. Well, about the <laughs> your period is giving the question mark. The whole thing. I can't even say it the right way. I don't want to. Well, that was, it's know. not so much that I, I'm, I'm dipping into stand up comedy. I'm just I feel like I want to do a comedy special like. Like, I'm already a stand-up comedian. Like, I've done a bunch of stand-up comedian shit, and I've been in a bunch of movies, and right, I made right. my way already, and now I got my special. No, I'm just going to jump straight to the special. So I just want to just do a... <laughs> I'm just going to jump straight to the special. Um, I'm so you're going to address on. everybody like, hey, this is... Uh, I'm nah, finally I'm here. The I'm dead ass. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to jump straight to the special. I'm going to really plan this out and put it all together. I'm going to get a place. I'm going to invite people. We're going to sit down. It's going to be food, drink. And I'm really gonna get my ass up there. Oh man, I, I definitely want to. I want to be there. And I'm gonna film it and all that good shit. I definitely, uh, yeah, I definitely want to be there for that. Awesome, that, that David. That sounds so dope. You know what I mean? Coming soon. Coming soon. Yeah, you know, together. um, <laughs> you know, what's the? Why not? Fuck tell me the IG because I forget the exact the handle of the I, your IG. Greaseball Greasy. Yeah, Greaseball G -R -E -E -Z -I. Greasy. G R E E Z I. Z I yeah. There's no underscore. Under is there an underscore between? No, no, no there's no. That's why. Just at greaseball. Greaseball. Greasy. Straight up. Greasy. And um, I you know because I love the the videos that you be throwing up. They're always you know you have to stop and watch them as you go along, and you you put them a lot in the morning sometimes too. You know what I mean? That's the after coffee yeah, effect. Yeah, that's that's what that is. <laughs> I done I done dropped kids <laughs> off to school. I got a coffee now. I'm I'm yeah. warm and friendly for the people. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, so if you're not, if you, you get into his albums, definitely. Yeah, I, the IG is part of the the entertainment of, of, <laughs> <laughs> of this, you know, because it's the greaseball activities. It's like daily, daily greaseball activities. Well, that's exactly what it is. Greaseball activities is just, that's, that's me. That's <clears throat> my way of life. This is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm sharing myself i'm I, I feel comfortable and confident enough to share myself with the world so that's what i'm doing mm, absolutely absolutely like Let's it, go, go ahead i'm sorry no 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 go ahead, go ahead. no i was gonna say like i said on my ig like if like well you see most people will see i use my ig to talk to people mm. to talk directly to people whoever's watching i don't really use it for myself purposes more than that i don't show too much of it's not all about me. It's more so about the people that's watching. So I use IG really pretty much to talk to people. That's why I, I do those videos and everything. Right, right. Right, which really it. works, though, because it really feels, you know, there's very there's very few MCs that, that and artists that use the Instagram where it feels like, you know, like we're having, you know, a conversation with you. Like, we're, mm. you know, we're, everything is so talking down to people or talking at people you know well I, mean? I found that you know i mean when i first started posting my songs and stuff nobody was really clicking to them i found that people was responding more to me just being myself so i started sharing more of myself on instagram to get more of their attention and then i just you mm. know segued the music in there somewhere mm. and Look, I made it to your show, which is a damn <laughs> honor because I know Appreciate you can't that. just get on your show. Oh no, no, no. yeah, <laughs> like everybody yeah. just can't you know, be on I, here. I, I did. I got this from my producer though. I ghost people. I just get lazy and I ghost. You know what I mean? And then I never answer yeah, back. But um, because some people are good, but are you good enough for me to really study you? Because I'm gonna study you. You right. know what I'm saying? I'm gonna study you. I'm gonna be listening to you work for like whole days. Right, right. No, come right. on. I'm, it's not just like 10 minutes and stuff and we do it on the fly, you know? Thank you. Yeah, you know? 
That's why I don't like talking about bad music too much because I have to listen to this bad music like a long time and right. stuff, you know? Hmm. And that's that wears off years, you know what I mean? This hip hop stuff is supposed to make us feel better. But um when you look back now, I was I never get the chance to ask people about they look back on certain records they did. <laughs> For you, you know, for <laughs> I'm just wondering where you're gonna go with this. No, no, I was gonna ask you simply about the soil and green. Oh, okay, okay, okay. About soil and green right. and and how you how you felt about it, like how it was received and things like that, and um, how I felt about yeah, soil yeah, and green? yeah. Oh, that's right. It's fucking crazy. It's awesome. I'm because I know that, you, that re shit. you released it with the skits, obviously, but you also right. did for you know you also released it without the skits, where it was just right. a straight. I, the hard copy I've re-released without the skits because of a person like you who, when I first released it, <laughs> said, "Yeah, I made a playlist of no skits. I just, I, I just, I didn't mean that. For, I couldn't yeah. take it. Nah, but um, at the end of the day, it made sense to me. I, 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 I put it together with the skits because, like I said, I, I, I feel like I'm a native tonguey kind of guy." Like, like, you know, to just to pay homage to the old school hip hop and the way things mm -hmm. were done back right, in the days. Right. So I drowned the fuck out of that shit. <laughs> yeah, it's just that when the emceeing is good, we want to focus on that. You know what I'm saying? That's why, like, for me personally, that's why sometimes I enjoy the later De La Soul records. Right, you know, right, You know, because I get right, to hear right. Paz News just go straight in all the time on Stakes is High. You know what I mean? Right, right. And, um... You know that's how I wanted. I wanted. I wanted to see if if I concentrate. You know, Greasy's bars like you know in just these 20, 30 minutes. Right, right. How's it gonna feel? You well, know I what wanted saying? to make it extra fun. So absolutely, yeah. And it definitely, it definitely one of the dope albums. You know thank what I mean? you. Thank you. Thank and, you. And and again, I you know you said you you're still feeling your way and stuff like that. What are the things in Soil and Green that you learned? That you were gonna that you say I'm gonna continue to do that, and then things that you were saying like I think I'll just leave that. I won't do it like that anymore. Hmm. I don't know. I can't really say because soil and green. Um, it was just something like honestly, <clears throat> I th I put out soil and green because I felt like I was bullshitting. I felt like you know I was taking too much time mm. dropping something. So you know I through a project together mm. so i like kind of get you in the, in there though you know like get you used to the idea right oh, i mean yeah. so i put it out to do it you know what i'm saying i didn't i i i just felt like i was bullshitting mm. like i had mad music like at before i even dropped soil and green i had like most of the music i already have right now like mm -hmm. i'm just like releasing shit i'm putting projects together and just releasing shit like i i go and record often but you know what can i say like i wouldn't do i don't know because to me it's all fun i'm having fun while i'm doing it i'm fulfilling my soul i'm feeding the streets um not too much i wouldn't do what i would do is you know just everything that you're supposed to do to make things successful i mean i guess that's why i'm coming up with different projects i feel like for me i feel like i attained my goal with soil and green and even league of gileadites because which was what like what are you thinking when you put these out well my goal was to get people's attention and let them know like not how ill i am fuck it straight up and down i ain't even gonna water that shit down mm -hmm. i just wanted the people know how ill i am because i've been ill for years and you know, I I didn't get on back in the days. Obviously, I like if you listen to my shit, you could tell I didn't just start rhyming. But um, I didn't get on back in the days. I wound up not broadcasting myself for years and years mm -hmm. and years. I actually came on the scene um, representing other people and managing and pushing other people. That's how I even came on the mm -hmm. scene. But um, shit, man. It's time to share my shit with the world because there's a lot of whack shit. Nigga should be corny, son. There's a lot of good people with a lot of corny shit. What made you just put yourself out there, though? Because you... Was this style always this unique? Because if you're pushing other artists back then and stuff, I know you're looking at it like, yo, I'm totally different <laughs> than everybody out, including the people I'm representing. That's dope. Yeah, but, you know, what was... 
what was stopping me was all uh, the dick ridery and bullshit mm. of people going along with whatever fucking is popping, lit, and all that other shit. And I it's mean. like, what we say, like the 2000s stuff? Um, mm, Yeah. Mm. Yeah, for the most part. But um, I don't know, man. I just got tired of it. Honestly, yeah. thank, <clears throat> thank, thank people like Shabam Sadiq. For showing me, really, yeah, truly, yeah, peace to my it's brother. alive. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I felt like hip-hop was dead for a while. Me, personally, I wasn't on the scene. Right, Seeing yeah. all that shit, I was pushing other people trying to, you know, attain different accolades and shit like that. But, like, I always knew my lane. I don't feel like, like, I say it all the time in interviews, I don't feel like people really know their lane. Like, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Look. Here I am. <laughs> Not G shit. Like, how'd I make it here? I'm where I'm supposed to be. I, mm. I rub elbows with, you know, people I, I was looking to impress. And, you know, I, I I was told my shit is dope by people who I still have their cassette. So, and shared the bill with them. Mm. I attained my goal. You know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, all I'm trying to do now is continue to push my brand, make it bigger. You know, tap into different sides of myself within my personality and all my artistry because I'm crazy. Right, and, right. you know, it's time to get this money. When you started to really, like, say, I'm going to make music, though, was it, is, you know, because some people, the beat making is, that's, that's why the beat making happens, so that they could easier make their own music. Was this some just beat making MC? It was just a simultaneous thing because always, like, you, yeah, because you said you was growing up and it was just MCing in the house. Always, and always. I were you the off, first one beat making in your home? Like definitely, but I always. My sister taught me how to beatbox first for her. Right, I used right. to beatbox for her and her friend doing their routines on the block and shit like that. One day I asked her to write me a rhyme. She fronted on me. I quit being <laughs> a beatboxer, and thus I started writing my own shit. You know. And making beats, I just, I just always felt like I knew I wanted to. Mm. I always like used to think about little jingles I used to hear, and and I used to sample in my head without knowing that's what I was doing. I didn't even know what sampling was, but somehow I knew I wanted to use certain pieces of music for whatever reason. Before I was even really writing full rhymes, and mm. <laughs> once I started rhyming. Um, and I went to a studio one day and I seen that I could make my own beats. Shout out Kwame, man. Funky Slice Studios. I'll never mm. forget Kwame. Funky Slice. That's an old studio name. That's how far <laughs> hip hop I go back. Mm -hmm. Lawrence Street, downtown Brooklyn. You already know. You, you, you already know. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, like I've been rhyming the same way I rhyme the whole time. I mean, that's wild to me because it's such a developed style. You know what I mean? I mean, and I would think, it. though, it would be it's... like a brace of the certain people, you know, like not being able to catch on to it. You know what I mean? Hmm. Even though I, you know, I'm saying I did. But... Right. Well, I, I've, I mean, I'm not going to say I haven't evolved, but hmm. like subject matter, I, yeah, I've pretty much been rhyming the same shit. For <laughs> <laughs> subject matter, yeah, I've been saying the same shit for years. I don't even know how I do it. Like, but <laughs> I do it. That's why I'm tapping deeper into my artistry right, right. because there's so many other things that have come out of me over the years that's not this shit you know what i'm saying not to say it's shit but it's my shit so i could say it that way but um yeah, yeah it's you know for the you know for the listener it's it's filled with wordplay that i'm going to be going to like you know to just to 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 give a little finality to the soil and green the Aurora Borealis. Aurora Borealis. Yo, that's one of my favorites. When right you now. go, comprendo, no, in, no Nintendo, no Sega, my temper is high, simplify as to Omega. Right. I mean, just come on. Serious. <laughs> just it's a, not a game. Just a clever. <laughs> <laughs> no, no Nintendo, no Sega. It's not a game. Yeah, yeah. No games. No yo. game, papi. No game. <laughs> Nah, yo, I visualize. All right, I'll share this with you, Sudan, because I love you. I visualize my shit <laughs> while I'm saying, like before I say it, and while I'm saying it, and then I see the most stupidest shit in my head, 
and that's what gives me the well, because extra emphasis to say it. <laughs> It's something I told, uh, you know, uh, Rim, sometimes when you come up with like a flip on Spanish, it's like a flip that a, a person that, you know, comes from a Latino background wouldn't have said. <laughs> right. Because you don't say the words that way. I know, I know. Because you said, you have to say it, comprendo, Nintendo. I know, but we say comprendo, so it doesn't really go. So we right. never think of Nintendo like that, that fast. So it's like, I heard it, I was like, oh man, you did the Rim on me. Rim does that shit. <laughs> Well, that's what we do here. Yeah, that's what yeah. we do here in hip hop. It's, it's, it's these Williamsburg brothers, man. They don't try to outspick them. They'll outspick you. And they ain't got, right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's they, a, they, <laughs> brothers from Williamsburg get to carry Yo, the Boricua the, flag, though. Yeah, that went over my head for a second. I I righted it and it went over my head for a second. That was funny. <laughs> we we'll yeah, outspick yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That's hey, funny. You you outspick me with this one, but um. <laughs> You know, when we, you know, transitioning from Soylent Green into the League of the Gileadites, right? Right. Now these are, you know, your original beats. Right. And Soylent Green, you know, you was Ice Cube jacking for beats. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? right. Why not? <laughs> and, um, you know, you was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm lazy, I'm this and that. And nah, it's, it's, what, a, what it's a reggae shit? album. These are dubs. I was doing that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah, we're good. I'm sorry. <laughs> These are dubs. Instead of saying original <laughs> mixtape, I'm gonna say dubs. Yeah. It's a dub plate. Just change the words around. A dub right. plate serving of soil and green. But um, now the strategy is a beat maker on the League of Gilly Dates, which is really like an EP because it's kind of short. Right. You know, it's like an EP. But you not know? nowadays. They put yeah, nowadays like, <laughs> like a, uh, yeah. Why I can't cheat I with still the times? It, yeah. That's the only thing I'm gonna do with the times is that bullshit. For me, it's like. <laughs> 19 minutes, I, put out a, I still go EP. I put out a mixtape, called it an LP. Yeah, you, <laughs> I got an EP, it's called it out. <laughs> and it's, it's, I love, I love, it's the paper, it's the paper that makes it official. You know? Right, look, this is, this is a crap. Is, this ain't really no rip. Does this look like a mixtape to you? Come on. But, but you know, with the, um, yes. <laughs> with the, you know, like when I was, when we interviewed, when I interviewed last time on, on class, DJ Toshi's Classic Stone Radio, peace to DJ Toshi. Right. My, my brother. Um, <laughs> I was so scared. But yeah. <laughs> Shucks. When, when, you know, you also was telling me like, you know, you was lazy with the beat making stuff like that. And I was, I was kind of looking at you when I was, I was right. answering you. I was like, like don't you lazy. dare be lazy on that next one. And this one is not lazy. This has really dope beats. They, Thank you. They're vibrant. They snap, they go with you. I love when good beats, though, don't drown out the bars either, though, hmm. because you got a lot of idiosyncrasies that I want to hear and not get drowned out either, right. and they go in there. So when you was deciding this project, I'm always curious when a person makes their own beat, are you making the beat or are you having bars that you, now you like, okay, I'm going to produce something that'll fit this, this verse? Nah. Like, how does it usually everything, go? Everything I make, I make the beats and... I feel them out, and whatever comes out my mouth comes out my mouth. So it's got to be I like the, the beat's got to please you first. Yeah, for hell yeah. That shit got to grab me. Mm. They got to grab me in a way that I automatically start thinking and saying words mm. straight up and down. I can't even So for front. you, though, how many beats do you go through of your own stuff? Like, like what's well, your... See, the deepest shit in the world is, is like when I'm making certain beats... That be the sh like I be knowing that this shit is crazy right now, and I start writing while I'm making it. So, uh, so it's happening at the same yeah. time and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of them, a lot of them happen. So then, a lot of times, maybe what I'm hearing though with the quality of that of the arrangements is because you end up arranging it to the verses right exactly. on the spot. My rhymes is part of the beat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I definitely see that because. Um, some of the stuff here is, is crazy. I, I'm going to Michael Eric Dyson the lyrics just to listen in a minute, though. But, uh, Chop suey. <laughs> <laughs> this title, and on the back of the album, says, The League of Gileadites was established as an anti-slavery militia with its goal of self-defense against slave catchers in the eyes of the federal government and federal law as constituted with the enactment of the Fugitive Slave Act. The, this organization clearly promoted illegal, civil, and most remarkably armed resistance. That's real shit. Why, why the real shit? Most people are like, oh, Greasy's funny and shit, and then he just packs it like that. And This was real. Soil and Green. 
That's some oh, real yeah, shit yeah. right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. We know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's, it's always real right, shit. Right, right, Yeah, I'm comical. I'm funny, but I'm... I, I, I got a lot of knowledge. Right, and that's know, what I'm getting I'm at because jewels. a lot of people, they always, you know, they simplify artists and there's so many layers, you know what I'm saying? Right, I mean, I just, I don't know. I never was a, I'm a conscious person, but I I, I, I was never a conscious rapper. I'm too much, like, I got a weird sense of humor. I'm a mm. funny, strange, silly person. So mm. you're going to get everything. Absolutely. Honestly, you're going to get everything in my shit. Now, with this project, though, every, nearly, actually, every song has a feature on it. You know what I mean? Why? Yeah, exactly. Why? And how? That, <laughs> also, how? Because I still build with brothers that they're like, yo, I'm still waiting for another feature. I'm waiting for this feature. I'm how long did it take to, to do this? Because the features I know are always like, you know, they extend the, the, the shelf life of the, of the time that it takes to make it. You know what I mean? Well, what's beginning to happen here and we see what's forming is the constant of the League of Gileadites, may I, for a second? This is another project that I put out because I felt like I was bullshitting. <laughs> had music. Honestly, um, I've been had all these songs. I had all of them done for the longest. So it's a, it's a, it's a long... Oh. It was just sitting around waiting for which project I was going to put out and how I was going to put it together. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I couldn't decide who and what to throw on which project where. So I don't know. I put them all in a playlist and I started listening to mm -hmm. them together. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to put out the feature album. But damn, how I'm going to do that? That's kind of cheesy. That's like if they helping me. But nah, they know me enough by now to know I don't need help. No, it's an They're with me on this. Listen to who I got. They're, they don't be with people they help. Mm -hmm. They be with people that, you it, know. So. It's a long period of time that this took together, you know, it pieces it together. And then now you decide out of all these tracks you have, mm -hmm. were, were all these done together? Like in the studio or the, some of the mailed verses? Um, like? Some of them. Some <clears throat> of them. The only new song, Eddie Kane. You know, I was going to ask you about the Eddie Kane song. Think about it. And, and <laughs> I, I would have guessed that that was the newest one only because he's such a young MC. Right. You know what I mean? And, and, um, <laughs> and I right. ask you because, you know, like people, what people don't go, and this is what I'm saying, it's like, and I don't think even you, Greasy, see yourself this way, but when you go to a New York City hip hop show and we see all these guys that have been there for so long that I'm going to have on my show, we're going to build, they're like staples of the underground. Mm. Like Skanks is, and Bankai fam is a staple of the underground. You right. know, uh, Mike Hands is a staple of the underground. Right. Joe Pesci, like these are all staples. If you didn't bump into them, you haven't been to enough shows and you don't have to keep your eyes open because they're always there. You know what I'm saying? Sure, indeed. These are, these are guys that are a court in New York City. It's just like if you've never been to a Rock the House show with from Doc Ock and, and Toshi. DJ Toshi, like, where the hell have you been like this whole decade? You know, it's like almost like over over maybe two hundred shows. Right. Right. If we're saying one every week, come on, it's, you know, it's just ridiculous. And um, you're one of those staples to me. Oh shit! You're Thank one of those you. people that I'm like, okay, that's greasy right there. That's greasy here. That's what's and, up. Um, you know, you're all over and like the the choices of all these MCs are really people that you've known for a long time. So that's why I was going to ask you. And since I just did, I just, you know, interviewed Eddie Kane why for, Eddie for Kane? the first time. What did you see in Eddie Kane that you were like, yo, he, I'm going to build with him on Sounds a track? fucking dope. Well, Get yeah. the fuck out of here. That's what said, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the yo side. <laughs> Salute side. My son is dope. Word, word. You know what I'm saying? He repped the style. He's you know, down the block from the kid, not too far. He's right down the way. Up. Nah, but um, honestly, it's because he's fucking awesome. Um, when I did the Grease Ball Activities live after the barbecue event, mm. um, Rim surprised me. Rim surprised the hell out of me and um, pulled him out in motherfucking Rome streets. As soon as he came out, I was stuck. I was like, yo, something there, got built. There goes that man again, Rim. That's my dude, the, too. The, he's the A&R of the last five years. Like, that's everybody my, that's dope, you know That's I mean? my guy, son. <laughs> yeah. he look, he's, yo, Rim looked out on... For the listeners, if we come to the end of the show, I got a Michael Eric Dyson. This, this is... I, I laughed at this 
it's such a dope. I can't even say it like he's saying it though. He says on outro, want to hear the wildest shit that you ever heard in your life? I'll be, I'll done. be done pulled my beef out and cheeseburgered your wife. Think that's messed up? Well, that ain't as messed up as me tearing up the flesh and getting ketchup on my left nut. Chicken butt. That's what happens after, guess what? Titty fucked the, the slut, slut, then I bust the Morris chestnut. I was cracking up through that whole bar. And Did you catch the Saracana line? <laughs> oh, the more I was fucking. You was nuts on that. Thank you. You was brother. nuts on that. Thank you. If you want to enjoy hip hop, if you want to see the artistry of it, the ruggedness of it, the Brooklyn of it, you got to get the Greasy I mean, he's Greasy I mean is on Bandcamp. He's one of my favorites. And Greasy, we're going to have you on here as soon as you make that next project. So when you find yourself being lazy as shit and release the next work. No, I'm actually putting then, in work. I've been right. putting in work for all this right. one. The next and, one um, is Broadway Junk Entendre 1. Broadway Junk. It's a and, um, you did project. allude to the um, the sweaters project. Oh, Attack of the Dope Sweaters. Look right? out for Attack of the Dope Sweaters. Yeah, yeah. Look out. If you do a video. <laughs> They're coming. Yeah. All right, because so I, I, I got say. dope sweaters. I'm just saying. That's I all got, I gotta I say. I got. Oh well, yeah, you got some dope sweaters. Yeah, you no, know, I got. You, you already man. know I got you in the video. <laughs> but yo, um, <laughs> I want to thank you again, Greasy. I mean, one of the most charismatic MCs of this invisible renaissance. You wow. know what I mean? So when you make a list of the stylists of the era, everybody knows you're gonna throw Rock Marcy at the top. Though on that list, Greasy, I mean, is gonna be on that list, absolutely without a doubt. Thank you. Know you. What I mean, and uh, these projects prove it though. If you don't like it though, you could give me money back and give him more money because you made a mistake. <laughs> now, thank you. Bro. So until the next time, there'll be a lot more stories to tell, writings to recite, and records to rewind and reminisce. I'm your host, Sunnies a lot, aka Skill Straight Low. And as always, the Power Right Show is a never respect fake broadcast. Peace.